everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace, and in this episode, I'm gonna show you how you can use some speed lights and some basic light modifiers to shape light, and that will save us from the predicament that I'm in today. And that is, I forgot to bring some really nice seamless backgrounds. I don't have any sets. I don't really have anything except for this very plain wooden wall. And so it's up to me to shape the light to create a beautiful portrait. And I'm gonna do that using speed lights and some very basic light modifiers. Now we're gonna uh, do that with a fantastic model. Her name is Katie, she's right here. And, uh, and so we're gonna do that. We've already set things up and sort of worked through things, but I'm gonna tear this all down and rebuild it and show you how we have created some amazing portraits one light at a time. So let's do that right now. Let me walk you through the setup and the gear that I'm using and sort of the philosophy behind what I'm doing. And so the camera that I'm using is a Canon R5. I've got a 24 to 105 lens. I've got flashpoint speed lights. I have a remote control on my camera that's gonna trigger uh, all of those speed lights. I have all my speed lights in manual mode and then I'm gonna change the power of each of those speed lights until I get it to the aperture value that I want which for my key light is around F9, F10-ish, around there, F11, I'll take it. So around that range. And then um, the other ones, I'm just gonna season them to taste. In other words, I'm gonna be shooting into my laptop here. I'm shooting with my Tether Tools, Tether Pro cable into Lightroom Classic. So as we're shooting, I can see exactly what we're doing. And then I can make sure that Katie can see what's going on because this light is pretty picky. Now remember, we have this sort of, bleh, background. It's not really exciting and so it's up to me to shape the light and so that's why tethering is going to really help out. Now when I'm talking about the position of the light we need to remember that it's in relationship to uh, it's in relation to the position of the camera. So the camera will be here. This is where I'm going to be shooting. So if we walk back here you'll see here's Katie right here. So everything is on axis and lined up. So when I'm talking about a light if it's at 90 degrees I'm talking about 90 degrees from here or 45 degrees from here. The problem is, if we leave the camera there and I shoot from here, you won't be able to see anything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move our video camera to the side and that way we can see what's going on. But here, when I talk about the degrees, 90 degrees, 45 degrees, you're not gonna be able to see that because our camera has moved, but I think you can work it out. It's all good. Now, let's talk about the lighting philosophy. I want nice, beautiful, soft light. So we're gonna start with our most basic light modifier, that is a softbox. So this is just a normal Lastalite softbox. There's no grid, there's nothing on there. This is about, oh, a foot and a half, something like that. So it's maybe a 15, 16 inch uh, softbox. And then I have my speed light in manual mode. It's on remote mode, so it can be triggered by my camera in group A. So I'm gonna be using groups so I can control each light independently. So this is on group A. So let's just start with a normal uh, lighting setup, which would be a softbox at about 45 degrees from the camera. I'm going to meter the light. So I've got my light meter here. And so what I can do is come over here and I will meter this light. And that meter's right at F9, which is fine. We'll take F9. That's all good. So I have my light in manual mode, my first speed light, group A. I have it on full blast, 100%. And so let's see what we get right here at F9. Beautiful, Katie. I like that. And so looking at that, I forgot to change my aperture. Let's do that again so that we can actually see that. Okay, one more time. So it's important once you meter the light to actually change your aperture so they match. But we can see uh, when we look at this image here, we have nice soft light, but that light is just everywhere. We have light going on the background. It's just blasting everywhere. So I want to shape the light. I want to control the light. And so what I'm going to need to do, since I don't have a grid, is I'm going to move the position of this light. So I'm going to go more to a 90 degree angle from where our camera is. So I'm going to move it over here about like this, somewhere in here. So now we're at about a 90 degree angle. I need to meter again to make sure everything is good. So I'll come back over here. Let me meter this light. Beautiful. So now we're at F11, which is good. I think that's about where I want to be. Okay, so let me change my aperture. 
Now we're at F11. Let's take a shot. Okay, we've controlled the light quite a bit, but you can see that we still have too much light on the background. And so what I want to do is I want to sort of take some of that contrast we got and lower it by moving that softbox to the side and then um, sort of moving it more toward a 45, something like that. But what that means is we're going to get more light on the background. Well, what I can use is something called a flag. And what a flag is, is it's something that blocks the light. And so it's going to tell the light, no, you can't go there. And it does that by just blocking it. So you can use anything for a flag. You can use a piece of cardboard. You can use a fancy flag that you buy. You can use an umbrella, which is what we're going to use. So I have an umbrella back over here. And so I'm going to use the dark side of this umbrella. And I'll put that all about right here. And so what's happening is now this light is being blocked by this umbrella. So that should keep the light from falling on the background. And so let's see if it works. I'm going to come back over here. Nothing has changed. I'm going to zoom in. I've got to move this umbrella just a little bit because it's in the shot. So there we go. Something like that. I'm also using a long lens to zoom in to narrow my angle of view so that I can get away with doing something like this. Okay, so now we'll take that shot and take a look at that. We have most of the light off the background. I need to move this umbrella just a little bit more to control the light. There we go. Should be about like that. One more shot. One more time. Beautiful. Ah, there we go. Okay, so now we have just a tiny bit of light on the background. We've isolated the light that's falling on Katie, but we need to do something else. We have too much light um, on Katie and not on her, the back of her head. So she's blending into the background. We need to be able to pull her out of that by adding a separation light. Now, normally you'd use a hair light or something and illuminate the back of a person's head, but instead of doing that, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna illuminate the background. So I have another speed light and this little speed light has a grid on it. And so that grid is going to refine where the light is falling. It's going to make a nice vignette. So I'm going to put this over here, something like that. And then what I can do is I can move that left and right to try to get it positioned exactly where I need it to be. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn that on. So group B, manual. I have it at about an eighth of power. So I did this before to sort of test this out. So that's how I got to that. I didn't meter it necessarily. So let's take a shot. So when we do that, okay, that looks pretty good. The light is too much to the left. I'll just move it slightly. It's very finicky. So once again, I'll take a shot. Okay, now we have sort of that, uh, that halo, that angelic uh, backlight. Now, because I have two different groups, A and B, I can adjust the power on that light to make it a little bit lower, a little bit more, so that I can have it just subtle or really bright, so I can control that. I like where it is right now. The problem is we have a lot of dark area over here. We don't have anything going on on this side of Katie's face. So what I want to do is I want to give what I like to call just a kiss of light. So what I want to do is I want to highlight her jawline and lighten up her cheek just a little bit, but I don't want to overpower that nice, soft, contrasty light that we have from our main key light, the softbox. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to use this. And this is a strip light, and so it gives us a nice, vertical, soft light. This is a rogue flash bender. And you'll notice it's on a weird little arm here. The reason for that is if I have it uh, on the light stand, so I did this earlier, and I put it in the right place, it's right in front of the light that's hitting the background. It's casting all kinds of shadows. So I need to be able to reach over and get it into the right place. So I've got this little uh, arm here that allows me to do that. So I'm gonna go over here and we'll put this right here. And I'm gonna position this so it's just, there we go. It's just throwing a light, a vertical light right here and it's just going to hit her right on the cheek so that should give her a nice highlight on the cheek and her hair 
It's a nice vertical light. So I have this on group C. So I'm going to go back to my remote control here. And I will turn on group C. So I've done that. And then to meter this light. So I want this to meter somewhere around f4.5, f6, something like that. So it's just a little subtle kiss of light. So I'm going to go over here. I'm pointing my light meter to that light. I'm going to meter that. And it meters at 4.5. I think that's going to work out just fine. One of the advantages of shooting tethered is you can sort of see how your light is looking as you're shooting. So we're going to try all that out. So I've got group B, that is my spotlight on the back at eighth power. Group A, that's my key light at full power. And group C at an eighth of power. Now these are all relative. So when you do this, just use a light meter and make sure that you get the, uh, the different levels to look appropriate. So I'm liking that. I'm going to come over here and take a look. And oh yeah, now we have this nice um, highlight on the cheek and everything is looking pretty good. Now this looks like it is overblown to me. It's like it has too much light. So I'm going to meter this one more time just to check my light. And yes, so I need to take this down by about two thirds of a stop. So I will do that. So we'll move that to about F14. So F14, and then your chin down just a little bit. There we go. Beautiful. Now when we look, ah, now we've got some beautiful light. We've got subtle light on the background. I like that. We've got a subtle light on her cheek. I like that. We have nice soft light on her face. I like that. So now it's time for us to do just little adjustments here and there and get everything dialed in exactly, do some color correction, all the boring stuff that you don't want to see, uh, want, you don't want to see me do, but that's what I'm going to do. And then once we have that all just perfectly dialed in, we're going to do a little photo shoot and then I'll show you my results. I love these pictures. I think they turned out wonderfully. Thank you so much, Katie. Now, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell so you get notifications of every single Adorama TV video. We're uploading pretty much every single day. Not just me, but a whole team of photographers and videographers and creatives that can help you learn and understand light and photography and post-production and everything. So you want to make sure you subscribe to Adorama TV so you get all that goodness. It's absolutely free, so do that right now. Thanks so much for joining me and I will see you again next time.